we have this evidence that Joe Biden was using these fake names. What about FARA, you know, the Foreign Agents Registration Act? I mean, Hunter Biden was doing all of these deals all around the world. And I think it's consistent with a larger pattern of the Bidens trying to hide their involvement of just how much money they were making and what role Joe Biden played at every turn. The investigation into Hunter Biden and allegations of corruption involving the Biden family. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is demanding that the National Archives release all of its records of then Vice President Biden's official duties that overlapped with Hunter Biden's foreign dealings in Ukraine. And in a troubling development, the committee says it has evidence Joe Biden was using fake names in some of his emails. We're joined now by Eric Eggers, Vice President of the Government Accountability Institute. Okay, so James Comer is out saying that he is calling these activities of the Biden family influence peddling, organized crime in Ukraine. The interesting thing is we have this evidence that Joe Biden was using these fake names like Arbor, Robert L. Peters and J.R.B. Ware. Why was he using those in emails when he was vice president? Right. That's an excellent question. And the only obvious conclusion to draw is to try to obfuscate or to hide whatever activities he was involved in. Thank goodness that we now know that you've got the office of the vice president sending emails that are CCing Hunter Biden to Joe Biden's fictitious name and official and, and private email addresses in which he says, hey, by the way, you have a call with the president of Ukraine today. That's happened at the same time that Hunter Biden was being paid by a company in Ukraine. And oh, by the way, that company had asked for a prosecutor to be fired, which, of course, Joe Biden helped facilitate. He brags about that. So that's one of the many troubling developments that we now know. And I think it's consistent with a larger pattern of the Bidens trying to hide their involvement of just how much money they were making and what role Joe Biden played at every turn. So it seems like Congress and these three committees that are investigating the Bidens are starting to find more of the puzzle pieces. But so far, it doesn't seem like they've been able to put the puzzle together. Uh, I guess I kind of disagree with that, Lindsay. I think that if you stay, take a step back, let's just consider what the larger picture that each piece from these three committees actually portrays. What it portrays is that Joe Biden took official action that benefited Hunter Biden's employer. Then they took steps to hide Joe Biden's involvement because of the fictitious email addresses. And oh, by the way, then it later turns like Hunter Biden has taken trips with Joe Biden on Air Force Two to set up other businesses in other countries, including China. And then later, after Joe Biden leaves the office of vice president, they take more money in from countries like China and they take steps to hide his involvement there with the University of Delaware and the University of Pennsylvania with the Biden centers. So uh, I think that I'm not sure much, how much more of a clear picture you would want to say that Joe Biden worked in tandem with Hunter Biden to help put money in the Biden family coffers. So you think that there is influence, there is enough evidence to show influence peddling? Well, we now have official testimony from Devin Archer, Hunter Biden's close friend and business associate, when he told the House Oversight Committee that what they were selling is access. They were selling what he said, the illusion of access. They were selling the brand. And we now know that the brand is, in fact, the Bidens. The more powerful Joe Biden became, uh, the more money they made. It's actually very reminiscent of what the Clintons did. And oh, by the way, Lindsay, remember this. Joe Biden was vice president when Hillary Clinton was secretary of state. For four years, the Clintons made all kinds of money when Hillary was secretary of state and the Clinton Foundation took in tons of money. The money that the Clinton Foundation has taken has gone down depreciably since Hillary Clinton left office. Joe Biden was vice president. Hunter Biden, I think, learned from the Clintons and they essentially replicated the model. That's what I think we're seeing. So it does seem like they're drawing this process out, though. Could they be doing that to mimic the presidential election cycle, much like Dem Republicans are accusing Democrats of doing to President, former President Trump? Uh, I guess they're doing what they can with what they can when they can. Um, I think they're somewhat limited in terms of each new revelation demands scrutiny, it demands investigation. Uh, the reason why I think, one reason why it's taking so long is it's not like the Bidens have just come forward and said, hey, here's all our email addresses. They have to subpoena things, they have to go through lawyers. Hunter Biden has hired some of the more expensive lawyers in the country to try to keep certain things off the table. Uh, and so I think that the House Oversight Committee is kind of hesitant to do things because they're afraid they'll be shut down. But I think the more they continue to look, the more that they, for example, can find access to Joe Biden's phone records, the more that we now know from these laptop emails 
that there's a litany of shell companies and bank accounts tied to these shell companies. It's a very complicated thing. So I think part of the reason why it's taking so long is because of all the steps the Bidens took to try to hide exactly what they're up to. That's why it's complicated. We're joined now by Josh Hammer, senior editor at large at Newsweek and host of The Josh Hammer Show. Josh, welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. So this is an interesting one because Hunter Biden is now expected to go to trial on the tax evasion charges since his plea deal fell apart. Do you see any new charges arising, though, from this special counsel's ongoing investigation? Well, it depends how broad his ambit is, right? I mean, how far is he allowed to go? I mean, we've heard rumors that he's going to be allowed to investigate tax crimes outside of Delaware. So as the U.S. attorney for Delaware, he would normally be limited to the geographical confines of Delaware. But if you're special counsel and you're allowed to do the whole United States, I mean, many of Hunter Biden's alleged crimes, both tax crimes and otherwise, were based out of California, Los Angeles in particular, which is where he was living or largely based at the time. But, you know, more than anything else, Lindsay, I am personally really interested in what happens internationally. I mean, what about FARA, you know, the Foreign Agents Registration Act? I mean, Hunter Biden was doing all of these deals all around the world, Ukraine, Romania, China. He was getting the big guy on speed dial. I mean, that's really what I want to see is whether they actually take their jurisdiction from the United States and go global, which, if I'm not mistaken, I think the special counsel does have the authority under the relevant statute to do that. So that is what we'll see. Obviously, it depends whether David Weiss wants to do that. That's kind of the million-dollar question that I think many on the right have been properly asking. So time will tell. Something that we've seen is several whistleblowers now come out and allege essentially the same thing, that Hunter did get a sweetheart deal. And as I mentioned at the top, his lawyers have said of the weekend, the federal prosecutor has now reneged on this plea deal that they originally agreed to together. Do you think that this is a sign that the Department of Justice is taking this case more seriously now since we have heard all these whistleblower allegations? That, that is how I interpret it. I mean, the fact that the DOJ is now openly disagreeing with the Biden lawyers, although, you know, recall that the DOJ and Biden's lawyers were disagreeing when the plea deal got before the judge a few weeks ago to begin with, of course. That was why the plea deal was ultimately struck down by this very attentive judge, is that they actually didn't even agree on the basic terms of the deal. They had disagreements as to the so-called diversion agreement for the gun charge. They had disagreements as to whether or not Hunter would be immune from future prosecution, whether it's in California, whether it's internationally, whether it's elsewhere. So this is now becoming somewhat of a theme, is that the DOJ and Hunter Biden's lawyers are disagreeing. Now, as someone who I think Hunter Biden has committed myriad crimes that if his last name were not Biden, he would be assuredly subject to large, large fines and most likely multiple years in prison. So as someone who believes that, it's certainly encouraging to see that DOJ is now finally starting to push back again. The question is David Weiss himself. I mean, David Weiss ultimately was in charge of reaching this sweetheart deal, of delaying it, of dragging his feet. So again, there's some there's some optimistic signs here, but this is the same attorney who oversaw that sweetheart deal to begin with. So I would encourage people to be to be cautious, to be vigilant, and ultimately we hopefully will get some justice out of this. So a new twist in the case as well is Hunter's lead lawyer, who's been with him for years now, is stepping down because he may be a key witness in this case. How could that change things for Hunter in the final 30 seconds here? Sure. Well, I mean, look, I mean, as a lawyer myself, I mean, you never want your your legal team to be kind of shaking up necessarily in the middle of a, of a major prosecution, in the middle of a trial. I mean, that generally does not indicate confidence, obviously, on, on behalf of his attorneys. And why would they be confident? The fact that the special counsel was announced in the first place, no matter what you might think of David Weiss, does indicate that the DOJ is starting to take this a little more seriously. So, you know, if you're Hunter Biden, you're definitely not happy about this news. I would certainly put it to you that way. All right. Well, we will be following Josh Hammer. Great to see you. Thanks for being with us.